Today on Locked On Rockies, Kyle Freeland gets the opening day start. What does that mean for his Rockies legacy? Where does he rank amongst Rockies greats? Plus, a split squad recap. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 20th day of March in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day is talk Rockies baseball, free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. You can fire off your Rockies hot takes. You can let me know what's on your mind there and be part of the show. Sometimes we read comments and uh, sometimes uh, we even ask questions, answer it, all that good stuff. You can find it all and uh, help the show. When you subscribe to Locked on Rockies, when you like the videos, when you comment, you are helping the show grow, and it's one of the best and easiest ways to help the show grow and get better. I'm Paul Holden, your Rockies fan extraordinaire, bringing you your uh, Rockies talk uh, here on the pod. I've been following this team my entire life, been bringing this pod to you here for uh, about, this is my fourth season now here on the show. And today, I, I know we've talked a lot about Kyle Freeland, but with him getting the opening day start, which wasn't a surprise, I think we need to remind ourselves that Kyle Freeland is a legendary Rockies pitcher. You can you can throw whatever grains of salt. You can uh, put whatever course field caveat. You can have whatever personal thing. But Kyle Freeland getting this opening day start has cemented his legacy as a Colorado sports icon. There is no if, ands, or buts around it. A guy that grew up in Colorado, plays at Thomas Jefferson, and now has played his entire career so far for the Rockies, while also being one of the most successful pitchers in Rockies history as well, it deserves to be recognized. It deserves to be reflected on, and it deserves to be put on notice that if Kyle Freeland is coming out and playing the way that he is feels like he can play as showing signs of in spring. And from some of the things that we're hearing from spring, it is something that you can sit there and say, we might total grain of salt getting ahead of myself. And I don't want to jinx anything, but we could see it a solid year. Let's let's even, let's just go solid year for Kyle Freeland. Let's not even go too over the top. Because the Rockies need Kyle Freeland to be solid. We're going to dive into more of that uh, here on today's show. Also talk about the split uh, split squad matchup that happened as well. Before we dive into everything today, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. So I I was setting the stage, and I I was bringing up how significant it is for Kyle Freeland to get this. Let me just say, let's just go over some baseball war Baseball reference war right here. Uh, According to their top 10, there's only one pitcher that Kyle Freeland is under in terms of war for a career. But it doesn't, I'm also, I'm curious, I I don't know if this page is different from this other baseball reference page because this has Ubaldo Jimenez at 18.9, Kyle Freeland at 17.9. But then when I'm not looking at Kyle Freeland's actual baseball reference page, I see 18.1. For Kyle Freeland and 20.4 for Ubaldo Jimenez. So maybe that's still, I think that might just be Rocky's war right there. I think that might be how this, that that's factored in considering that Ubaldo went and pitched for uh, Cleveland and Baltimore, but still, I, I mean, think about that. Higher war than Herman, higher war than Jorge De La Rosa, Chasin, John Gray, Pedro Estacio, Jeff Francis, Aaron Cook. I mean, These are the names, when you think of great and successful Rockies pitching, those are the names. It doesn't get better than those names. And so for Kyle to be above those names, and in a situation where if he has a strong year, if he has a a great year, if he has a year, a flashback year, that's going to do massive things not only for these numbers, but again for his legacy. 
if if we see a Kyle Freeland that instead of has a home, if, if we see a home runs drop by 10 for Kyle Freeland, the Colorado Rockies win more ball games. If we see, if he goes, if he gives up, that goes back to even his 22 and two number of giving up 19 home runs. He, I mean, that it'll, the, 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 the significance would be massive. If it, he was a Cy Young, he got votes for the Cy Young. He got votes for the rookie of the year. I mean, Kyle Freeland, if he's able to pitch at the velocity that he's that he's coming out of, we, we th this is going to be something that will show that it made sense to extend him. He was the guy to stick with. When it's said in when it's all said and done, when you look at the extensions for Rockies pitching, you're going to question for sure the Antonio sends a telecontract. Herman Marquez going down with Tommy John complicates that th this, but Herman has been really good. Herman arguably has 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 shown that he he has the stuff to be a great as well an all-time Rockies great as well I understand what the bar is I understand what the level is I understand what other pitching staffs are capable of but this is in the context of the Colorado Rockies this is a, a this season is just such a an interesting opportunity for Kyle Freeland to just not only you know, benefit his career, but I mean, just take a massive stride in being a, the the face of a, the the new face of successful Rockies pitching. Again, I, I more statistical categories that Kyle Freeland is in the top five in earned run average. He's in the top five in wins. He's uh, he's in the top. Uh, I'm he's in the top ten in strikeouts per nine innings pitched. He's in the top ten. In innings pitched, top five in innings pitched. He's in the top ten in in strikeouts. He's in the top ten in games started, and is going to be pretty darn up there for 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 number one. Him and Herman might go back and forth depending on he's, he's he'll probably finish with more games started than Herman Marquez because of Herman's injury, and and who knows what might happen with with Herman. Kyle Freeland is also a, you know a, a guy that that is that has been here. And and has been incredible for the community. And I know I've talked that about. Them. I just wanted to re-bring up all of that information to remind yourselves when you're talking about Kyle Freeland, and even with some of the struggles, he's still been good for the Rockies. And he's earned this. He's earned the right to be someone that looks at as a, as a solution to Coors Field. Kyle Freeland, yes, has 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 been bitten by it, but. He's also been able to be better, be more impactful, better than not. And someone that's been able to, to pitch and eat innings for the Rockies in crucial situations. I mean, triple digit innings the last three years it, with, with the with the way this Rockies rotation is gone, and even his own health issues as well in that in those times, that's very important. Mixed in with the fact that we are hearing nothing but great things from Kyle Freeland from this spring so you're hearing about it seeing it let's read let's 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 back that up here uh from from purple row in 14 innings over and uh I'm reading from Skylar Timmons is Kyle Freeland named 2024 opening day starter in 14 innings over four starts this spring, Freeland has allowed just five runs on 14 hits with opponents batting 255 against him. What's been the most intriguing is that he has 14 strikeouts to just a single walk, thanks largely to an increased velocity. While he spent the 2023 season averaging between 88 to 90 miles per hour, he has regularly reached 92 to 94 miles per hour on his fastball. He's also been working on a new changeup grip that he learned from retired St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Adam Wainwright when they played in the World Baseball Classic together last year. His command of the zone has led to an efficient 11.79 pitches per inning. It's spring training. I understand that. But for him to now show the increased velocity across spring training your your excitement level for Kyle should build, and you know I I, I know what the ceiling most likely will be, but I'm not going to let that sit here and tamper my enthusiasm for a guy that has earned his place in in in, in Rocky's history and earned this this moment, earned the right to have the set to be tied for the most amount of opening day starts with Herman Marquez, earned the right to be someone that gets to say. I pitch at Coors Field and I have been successful here. 
Yes, you can look at last year. Yes, you can look at some of the and stuff, and you can point to some of the, the the bad times. But then that means you're completely ignoring when he's had success and the fact that he's only thirty or, or what is he? He's over thirty now. Was he thirty one? He's gonna be thirty one this season. Uh, he's just about to turn thirty one in May. So he still could potentially have a few great years left, good to great to cement his legacy here as someone that has fully established himself and fully bought in to being a representative of the Rockies. And the other thing is too, if Kyle Freeland comes out the gate and sets the tone, I think that's really going to be something we can look for to, 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 for the Rockies to build off of and grow with as the season gets started. I want to dive into that. And again, I want to just go in a little bit more into just uh some of the stuff that uh, that that uh, we've heard about Kyle Freeland from the from spring, from the camp, and from uh, what people are saying about him in the news following this uh, uh, announcement of him being the opening day starter. We're going to get to all of that and more coming up in segment number two of Locked On Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to play daily fantasy. Where are you gonna find my? There it is. There it is. Uh, find it's your uh, number one spot for daily fantasy, and uh, it's just in time. You can get a hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And like I said, you can get a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. You can see it all. You can download the app and you can get a first deposit match up to $100 when you download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB. That's code Locked On MLB, all lowercase, and you can get a first deposit match at Prize Picks. Make sure you download that app, use code Locked On MLB, get that deposit match, and don't miss out on all the daily fantasy sports fun at Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network and on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. You can uh, fire off your uh, Rockies hot takes. You can let me know what's going on on your mind when it comes to the Rockies. And uh, folks, we got a big uh, preview coming up for you here tonight. As you know, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today. Uh, tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, be the first to get local insight from the MLB local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, uh, so I was talking about Kyle Freeland, and uh, I, I, I gush a lot about that. I, it, it's something that uh, I, I understand. I mean, I'm a little sappy for it, but I, I think it's a guy that's earned it. And as much as, uh, you know, criticism as you might have and worries as you might have for Kyle Freeland, the things that we've seen from him this spring are really encouraging. And if those transfer over to the regular season, he is the type of, he is the guy the Rockies are going to have to rely on to start the season off, to, to get things going on the right, uh, on the right foot, on the right. Uh, it, it, he can be the momentum setter. He is the, he is when any Rockies pitcher out of any of them, he's the guy, he is the one the Rockies have to turn to as usual to be the one, be the stability, be the trendsetter. The Rockies have looked to him during this, this, this turbulent time of the regular of, of this, of, of, of bad health. And he has been the one that has been able to, to, to stand the test of time, even throughout his struggle. And he takes last year easily when you're looking statistically 
the worst season of his career. Uh, maybe 2019. You could say 2019, maybe a little, maybe worse, but really depends on how you look at it. <laughs> it depends on, on, on that. But he takes last year and he goes in and he, and he, and it's, and it's not completely changing the wheel. It's reevaluating where he's at, reevaluating who you are, reevaluating where your body, where your mindset's at. And to be able to turn that into getting yourself feeling like you've taken the best care of yourself since 2021 mixed with an increased velocity and an increased confidence and the experience of being a major league vet and, and the experience of being able to work with one of the most successful pitchers in the game. That type of stuff matters. That's the type of stuff you look for in leadership within Rockies pitching. When you are looking for someone with rock with bona fides, for Rockies pitching, Kyle Freeland has them. And if this year is the bounce back year, if Kyle Freeland is an all star this year, it's it's not gonna. It might not. It might not really change the overall outcome of this season for the Rockies. But they'll win more games. His he will go down. He will he will shoot up the lists of of where he ranks amongst all time Rockies. This is an opportunity for Kyle Freeland to, to set the tone for the Rockies in 2024. And when you're looking, this is, this is a moment for the Rockies vets, Kyle Freeland, Charlie Blackman, Ryan McMahon, to rekindle, reignite, remind people about successful Rockies baseball. They were there the last time it happened. I know Ryan McMahon, it's kind of a stretch, but... Uh, Kyle and Chuck, two guys that their roles on the team can't be undersold. If these guys show that they are able to still contribute and be effective and be better, that matters for the Colorado Rockies. That matters for this team. It matters for these young guys to be able to grow and go with. It matters for the Rockies to have a guy that they can rely on in the starting rotation as they hope to get the other guy that they really rely on back in there. This is it, It's just an opportunity. When I think of, of a guy on the Rockies that I want to be the trendsetter, be the one that gets this season off to the uh, on the right foot, be the one that that dominates. Kyle Freeland's at the top of that list. I mean, obviously we root you root for anybody. You, you uh, of course, that's that's the whole point of what we do. But it's a moment here. This this stuff when you are talking about significance in the history of the Colorado Rockies, this stuff matters. This stuff matters. It really does. So I know I, I know I'm a little sappy on it. I, and, and I and I understand it's like, hey, it's Kyle Freeland. Like pump the brakes a little bit about it. But that's what I mean. It it it's a it this is a moment to reflect on success, even amidst his struggles. It doesn't take away from the fact that he has success and has the ability to be successful again and the potential to bring greatness back to the Colorado Rockies. You know, it, it, the next, you know, a, a miraculous Rockies run, as un, improbable as it is, if any sort of, of crazy Rockies run or crazy Rockies uh, eyebrow razor or, or crazy Rockies something that, 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 that makes people turn around and be like, whoa, this team's better, better than expected, it's going to start with Kyle Freeland. And it's going to continue, and it's going to happen because of Kyle Freeland. He is easily one of the most important most important pieces of this team, like we talked about before. So, I, I we'll, we'll see where it all shakes out. But like I said, a, a great year for Kyle Freeland, and and he he really cements himself uh, amongst amongst the greats. In, in Rocky's history and, and could put himself on a, on a, on a, on a, on a separate pedestal. And just in case you're curious, the down year for Kyle Freeland last year 
1.7 war still. Kyle still, yeah, see, see that, that, that list is a little interesting because Julius Justine's got a higher career war, but there are a lot of teams on that list. So I think that list is, I think that top 10 list on baseball reference is just Rockies war. But Kyle Freeland does have his, uh, uh, when you're, if you're going to go careers, total careers, he is uh, third in total war behind uh, Julius Chassin. Higher uh, war than Jorge De La Rosa. Higher war than Herman Marquez. Higher war than Aaron Cook. Higher war than Antonio Senzatella. Higher war than John Gray. And I know there's more stats, and I know there's more things to look at, but war is just a pretty good benchmark when you're looking at success and when you want to compare it to others. So, okay. Uh, that will wrap up my, my Kyle Freeland gushing again. I, I, I like I said, love the guy. I, I really, I just love the story. Um, I can't get enough of it, but let's, uh, let's talk about the split squad. Let's talk about, uh, what happened. Let's talk about the stuff. That's uh, a good sign here. For the Rockies, even though uh, lots of runs given up still again and uh, no wins on the table as well. But we'll talk about that coming up here in segment number three. Before we dive back into the Rockies action, got to tell you about our friends at Game Time. Game Time, Game Time, Game Time. Can't talk good about them enough. They are great when it comes to getting your tickets. Last second, anytime, really. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I used Game Time to get into the All-Star Game. I used Game Time to get into a last-second concert earlier this year that was sold out. I've used Game Time multiple times. It is my go-to source for tickets, and you can get in on all the fun with $20 off your first purchase. When you download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. One thing you'll see when you're making your purchase, images of your seat so you know exactly where you're going to sit. You can see all the, so the spots, all the tickets available to the next greatest event. Doesn't have to be sports. Can be comedy. Could be anything. Check it out on the game time app. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N. That's code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Shout outs to all my everydayers out there. Shout outs to y'all for tuning in and uh, joining us here on this lovely, lovely Wednesday. Rockies did play two games and they tied one game here on Tuesday. They also got thumped in the other game by the Mariners, but some good storylines, some good things to see here from those games is that the uh, Rockies do get uh, a home run from Charlie Blackman, his first one of the spring. The problem is the Rockies had a 7 nothing lead in the fourth inning before it was given up. Again, when we're talking about trends, and I understand all of the stuff that all of the uh, all the things to keep in mind and consider there. But one thing that we've talked about a lot of times this spring, Rockies jump out ahead. Rockies jump out to a you know, crooked number lead, uh, something like that. And then it starts to fall apart. I understand the context of spring, but it's something that as we're getting basically down to the home stretch, not something I was really hoping to continue to see. But uh, at the same time, the Rockies are, are still a team that is scoring a lot. This They're a team that is... Uh, Still been being, uh, you know, mostly successful. Not so much there in the uh, in the game against uh, the Mariners there, where it was a twelve to three drubbing uh, at the hand of the M's there. Uh, some strikeouts on the board there. The team striking out eleven total times there uh, as a team in that one. Some stuff that uh, obviously we're not uh, super thrilled about, and you know, the, the big concern is we were just waxing poetic there about uh, about. Kyle Freeland, 
Uh, you certainly can sit and say there are some concerns so far about Austin Gomber in his limited time this spring. 0-2 with a 15.26 ERA in 7.2 innings pitched. Five strikeouts and a whip of 3.13. I understand it's early. I understand uh, that it is uh, something that uh, we don't have to worry too, too much uh, about, I guess. But those are bad numbers. And those are bad numbers from a guy that, again, has just been treading water, has, you know, had moments last year where, where you know, you, you like the tenacity, you like the energy, but boy, that's, that's, that's what I'm, when, when the significance of Kyle Freeland is emphasized by the mediocrity of, of Austin Gomber's performance or, or the concern so far. I mean, he's been getting roughed up so far this spring. That's that's you know that's a big problem. Giving up uh, 21 hits in 7.2 innings, including a home run, three walks to five strikeouts. It's spring. I, I'll, I'll give it time, but it, it's it's really that that stuff's worrying. That stuff's worrisome. Uh, let's see if I can get the other uh, the other game here. Starting pitcher for uh, the Rockos here in this game, Dakota Hudson has uh, his ERA this spring is uh, 3.60. Got six strikeouts in this game, uh, gave up three hits. He's been, uh, you know, again, he's been looking a little interesting. And when you're comparing it there, Dakota Hudson, uh, one and one, 3.60 ERA and 10 innings pitched, 11 strikeouts, a whip of 1.60. Austin Gomber's got to, I mean, He's got to perform. He's got to step it up. I mean, Cal Quantrill and Dakota Hudson, I know they, they're they're not the Cy Young candidates. I know they're not the elite, elite ball players that that of uh, that some wanted the Rockies to go after. But these guys are coming for your spot. You know, you're gonna slip further and further back. And there's a young guy, Ryan Feltner. There's young, there's young pitchers that won their spot on this team as well. And Austin Gomber, if it wasn't for injuries, I would still probably be looking for his spot on this roster. So, I mean, I'm in, I'm encouraged by by that. Again, we're we're, we're taking a, a, the grain of salt of, of spring there, but that's the type of stuff you're looking for. Dakota Hudson now in those ten uh, innings pitched has uh, not let up a homer, has uh, given up nine hits uh, and four earned runs in that time, given up seven walks to those eleven strikeouts. But again. 21 hits to 21 hits in 7.2 innings pitched big big worries big big concerns there when it comes to uh when it comes to the uh Rockies uh third arm in the rotation there Austin Gomber uh you know some interesting names there in the bullpen for this uh this game but the big issue when you're when you're looking at this is uh Tyler Kinley and Jake Bird are uh, get roughed up in the game against the Guardians. That's the reason that the Rockies uh, lose that lead, basically. Tyler Kinley allows uh, three earned runs, and then uh, Jake Bird allows up twos. But uh, Mears there in the end as well gives up uh, three earned runs. It's it's that's that's the big problem here. You know, the, the, the curse of the Rockies here. Two walks from Tyler Kinley, and that leads, and that leads to three earned runs. Uh, two walks from Bird, that leads to two earned runs. Mears, uh, it's a walk and that, you know, and a home run. So that's the type of stuff that's going to sink the Rockies this season. That's the type of stuff that they got to avoid. Those are the, they got to avoid those big crooked number innings if they're going to be successful. And they got to be able to count on guys like Kinley and Bird to get it done. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. We'll be back in action. Actually, I want to preview or get excited for some stuff. Um, we are going to be interviewing a uh, basically, I don't have it all labeled out yet, but we're going to be hopefully having almost, I think I almost have it fully planned out, but almost every day leading up to opening day, potentially every day leading up to opening day, starting on Thursday, we are going to have a different Rockies media member or a group of media members coming on to, uh, or people that cover the Rockies, follow the Rockies, Colorado sports people uh, that, that follow the Rockies. And uh, we are going to talk rocks, preview the season, get ready to go here with a bunch of uh, with content creators, media people. So stay tuned for that coming up uh, starting on Thursday, starting tomorrow. 
Uh, so we'll, we, we'll, we got Patrick Lyons. We got Susie Hunter. We got uh, the Purple Row guys are going to be joining us. We got Jake Shapiro. Uh, we got all we got all sorts of people. A chap. i uh, sorry. I, <laughs> I don't know where I was going there. Uh, but we got all sorts of uh, uh, everything's still being finalized here as uh, we're getting things ready to go. But uh, hopefully be looking for that. Hopefully everything's going to be coming to uh, to you real, real soon. Uh, but but be stay uh, staying tuned for that as we're getting ever closer to opening day. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much again for making us your first listen of the day. Check us out uh, on your favorite streaming services. Check us, uh, check us out on your uh, Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. Locked on MLB has got you covered on that uh, second listen. And Locked on Broncos, Locked on Avalanche, Locked on Nuggets, and Locked on Buffs. Got you covered for more Colorado sports coverage. Till next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.